So, but the thing is, he pretended he, he couldn't do anything. He pretended he played the village idiot, but he would always pretend he didn't know anything about anything. But he studied everything he collected. He knew backwards and forwards, including our historical references. You know, we were along sometimes traveling, and it was time to kill, and be sitting around his hotel suite, and he would then talk in a serious way, and he would say things like, you know, we were in Mexico, and he would say, we went to see uh, uh, Siqueiros, and he would say, I don't think Siqueiros is that great, Diego Rivera is really a lot better, and then he'd say, I didn't even know you knew these who these artists were, because when you'd sit through interviews with him, and he always wanted one of us, at least, to be up on an interview with him, um, you know, people would ask him about his art, and he would go, oh, gee, I don't know. I'm just a traveling society portrait painter, and I just follow my hairdresser, Fred Hughes, he tells me where to go. And, you know, these art critics would be like, is he for real? You know, he, had, he had this kind of just uh, innate understanding of how to become famous, and part of the way you become famous is we now call it a brand, you know, and Andy kind of branded himself. I mean, the, the art went with the white wig and, and, and the black leather jacket and the dumb responses to journalist questions. Uh, it all became, you know, this kind of pop. Well, because his, his, his look, he developed the, if you see early pictures of when he first came to New York with the khaki pants, he's looking, he looks kind of awkward. He's the young artist at that. But as, by the time he becomes, he emerges in 1962, after the show at the Ferris Gallery in Los Angeles where the Campbell Soup Cans were first shown, there's a definite look. He's developed a look, and that look continued. And when I met him in 69, he, he already started the habit in the early 70s is to dye one eyebrow black and one white. And if you ever look at somebody like that, it's to make me crazy. And then by 1980, he became uh, a male model. People said to me, he's, you know, is Andy sick? He's lost so much weight. And I said, he's a male model. You know, he was working, he, because he really, that well, was, I, 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 he was the only one day and I said, Andy, this male model thing is ridiculous. You're anorexic, you're not eating. I, and, and, and people are laughing at you when I'm around my, and he said, oh, Bob, you're just jealous because you're too short to be a male model. 